Good morning. So good to have you here. I am Jim Miller, along with Deacon Helen Ballou. We welcome you to our service as we gather in person here. We are uh, having some issues with our sound this morning, so we don't quite have our uh, online uh, uh, congregation yet. So to all of you who are gathering here, thank you for being here to be part of our service on this All Saints Sunday. We're going to wait one more second here. Lessons and pages. There we go. Welcome. And now we're all together. Isn't that good? Welcome. So glad that you're here as we gather here at Grace United Methodist Church in Gaithersburg, Maryland. I am Jim Miller, the senior pastor, and along with Deacon Helen Ballou. Welcome to all who are joining us online. I'm so glad that you're here, as well as all who are here in our sanctuary. We have gathered for our All Saints celebration. This day, we pause to give thanks for all those who have been a witness of Christ to us. And I'm sure that throughout this service, those names are just going to be flashing in your mind and hearts as we celebrate their lives. And during the service, we'll be lighting candles and loving remembrance of our members who have passed this last year here at Grace. So their picture will be shown, a candle will be lit as the bell sounds. To families who are gathered here, thank you for letting us be part of this experience with you as we remember with you and can only imagine how difficult this this must be for you but know that we're praying for you after the service you're welcome to take one of the, the candle that was lit in remembrance of your loved one today we are celebrating the sacrament of holy communion to all who are joining us online i do ask that you have some bread and grape juice handy and when time comes we'll offer our prayer over the elements and we'll be able to consume. To those gathered here, Deacon Helen and myself will actually be bringing the elements to you. So we just invite you to please have your hand out to receive and you'll receive a cup that has the little wafer that is wrapped on top of it. You are again invited to consume it here or to take it home. Gluten-free is available. So as we gather to remember the saints, we're reminded that actually we are all saints because a saint is someone who is living in a right relationship. So whether technology is working or not, whether the temperature is too warm or too cool for you here, you here, we can all these obstacles, but the constant in our lives is God is present for us and this is what gives us hope. So now to prepare ourselves for worship, to center ourselves, Betsy Moore will now share with us our morning prayer.
I invite you to join me in the call to worship. We remember, O oh God, the countless saints of history who have blazed a trail of courage through time. We remember, O oh God, the tender touch of loved ones, the example of heroes, the healing words of comforters, the remarkable acts of fearless ones. We remember, O oh God, the gentle strength of grandmothers, the loyalty, the loyalty of, of friends, friends, the kindness of strangers, strangers the joy, joy of, of children, children, the sacrifice of parents. parents. We remember, O oh God, the supreme love of Jesus, the blessing of his spirit, the reminder of his words, the sharing of his suffering, the glory of his resurrection, shown forth in the lives of his disciples, Young and old, dead and living, articulate and silent, strange and familiar, brilliant and ordinary. We remember in every time and place the saints of God who have shown us the Lord. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us worship God with joy. I invite you to pray with me. O oh, living, living God, God of, of past and, and future, future, we praise you for this present moment. moment. Fill, Fill us with your joy and empower us with your Holy Spirit, Spirit that our, our strength, strength may be renewed to sing, sing a new song of your glory in a world which longs for your justice and peace. peace. All, this All this we ask in the name, in the name of Jesus. Jesus in, in whom, whom we become, become your, your new creation. creation. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able for our opening hymn, Rejoice in God's Saints, number 708 in our hymnals. <laughs> I invite you to be seated, please.
Good morning. Good. You can come right here, sure. I love that. that. That takes courage, and there you are. You're running to be up here. I swear to God, you can join me right here, okay? So glad you're here. Welcome. Welcome. Tell me your names. Maddie, welcome. So glad you're all here. Thank you for coming to church. Also. Well, if you look behind me, you'll notice there's a lot of candles here today, aren't there? I wonder why we have so many candles in church. Well, candles have played a role in the church for a long time. Before we had electricity, what, we needed candles to see, didn't we? Why, like today, where we, the change in times, why maybe we needed lights at a time we usually didn't need them, you know, so, so they used candles to symbolize. But since we have electricity, we still have, oh, that's all right, Miss sure. She might come back, sure, I know, that's all right. Well, we have candles, there she is. They serve a different reason, don't they? They remind us of Jesus. And what I mean by that is, this Bible tells us that Jesus is the light of the world. And so today, we have the candles. In fact, a real tall candle there we call the Paschal candle. That stands for how Jesus gave his life for us all. And on Easter Sunday, we lit that candle. And then on special Sundays, we light that candle again. And today we're lighting that candle because we're remembering those special people in our lives. We call them saints. That is, they allow Jesus' light to shine through them. Now in our Bible lesson, we read about a couple characters. There's one guy where he wears long robes and wants everybody to notice how special he is, but doesn't really talk about God. That's not shining Jesus' light, is it? But then we read about a woman where she has two pennies, not very much money, is it? But she puts them in the offering plate and Jesus points it out because he says this woman gave her all. When we think about those people in our lives that give their all, that is who love us, who are there for us, we give thanks. And so we light a candle celebrating the fact Jesus is lighting through them. So today, I have a candle for you. Now it's not a real candle. See how it lights up there? So I have a candle for each of you. Wait a minute, they're not lighting. Defective candles here? That wouldn't be good, would it? You know what it is. You have to pull that strip of paper out first to let the power from within light the candle. Like that one. You want this one? You can have that one. And you give this one to Maddie. And just like that candle has power within, when we have Jesus in our hearts, his light shines through us. Okay, you may take that. Would you take that for her? And thank you both so much for coming up today. Oh, man. Thank you. <laughs> How we give thanks for our younger saints in our church family. At this time, we're going to have the reading of our names as we remember with thanksgiving those saints who have witnessed Christ's light to us. As the names are read, you will see a picture of them again. These are our church members who have gone to glory in this past year. We give you thanks, O oh God, for your saints. Martha Ball. Patricia Brink. Herb Collis. Samuel Finlay. Tanya Anthony Haith.
Les Hatley. Howard Ortmeyer. Linda Pitts. Helen Sexton. Reverend Ralph E. Spohr, Jr. Hal Wells. For all who have been called home. We give you thanks, O oh God, for all the saints who ever worshipped you, whether in brush arbors or cathedrals, weathered wooden churches, or crumbling cement meeting houses where your name was lifted and adored. We give you thanks, O oh God, for hands lifted in praise, manicured hands and hands stained with grease or soil, strong hands and those gnarled with age, holy hands used as wave offerings across the land. We thank you, God, for hardworking saints, whether hard-hatted or steel-booted, head-ragged or aproned, blue-collared or three-piece suited. They left their mark on the earth for you, for us, for our children to come, Thank you, God, for the tremendous sacrifices made by those who have gone before us. Bless the memories of your saints, God. We now name them aloud. May we learn how to walk wisely from their examples of faith, dedication, worship, and love. Amen. Now I invite you to stand for hymn number 711 for all the saints. there 
hearts are brave again and arms are strong. I invite you to remain standing for our gospel lesson, a reading from the Gospel of St. Mark, the 12th chapter, beginning with the 38th verse. As he taught, he said, Beware the scribes who like to walk around in long robes, to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces, and to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and, for the sake of appearance, say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, This poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. At this time, we will have a special music by our M&M singers entitled, Thankful. Thank you. 
Thank you all so much. We are thankful. Would you pray with me, please? Lord, as our children just sang, we are thankful. We are thankful for so many things, and especially in this service, we are reminded of those we are so thankful for, to let the light of Christ shine through them. You tell us in your word that they are cheering us on. For this we are grateful. Lord, we pray that you allow this moment of reflection as we prepare to come to your table to be one in which we acknowledge and offer our thankfulness to you for the gift you've given us in Jesus the Christ. Bless and use this time to your honor and glory, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And so as part of our giving thanks and remembering in this special service, we are using this gospel lesson from St. Mark. Mark is not so much a source for historical input about Jesus or biographical, but all the theological that Mark provides us is powerful. That is, the understanding and teachings about Jesus just flood our souls when we encounter this text. In this lesson today, Jesus is teaching us about being living sacrifices. A sacrifice. A sacrifice is something of value that we offer to God out of devotion and worship. Something of value that we offer to God out of our devotion and worship. Sacrifice. And so for these saints that we are remembering, they truly have been for us living sacrifices, testimonies, as we think about how devoted they were to God and to all of us. Living sacrifices. And who now, in Christ Jesus, know in full what we will one day know of being in his presence. Lives of devotion. When we look at this text, Jesus talks about those who are walking around in long, flowing robes. Wait a minute, let's get a little personal here. No. For different reasons, I hasten to say. They were wearing their robes so others would notice them, pay attention to them, recognize them. We're told they they loved to have the best seats in, in the temple, in the marketplace, and would say the long prayers just to impress others, but then we are told they would devour the widow's household offerings. That's not devotion. That's simply living for self. But then Jesus goes on to tell us about the woman as he sits down opposite the treasury who puts in the two small coins, hardly worth a penny. And yet he calls attention to her because she gave her all. Again, we celebrate and remember those who gave their all who gave everything they had so that we would know the love of Jesus in our lives, that we would accept him for ourselves, that we would live a life that is devoted in worshiping him. Her testimony. Two small coins, yet here we are hundreds of years later focusing upon it. The author, Catherine Norris, in her book Amazing Grace, talks about how she struggled with the word righteous. She was just found it difficult to even use that word because in her mind she always thought about those who were self-righteous, judgmental. It's said that's the number one reason why some people don't come to church. The church is too judgmental. But then she began to think about that word, how it's used in Scripture and through God's teachings. It's not being self-righteous or judgmental, but rather through the prophets and through the Gospels, we are reminded to be righteous in our living, identified by Jesus as caring. 
caring for the widow, caring for the orphan, caring for those on the margin, caring for those in need. Again, the saints we remember care cared about your life's goals, cared about your relationship, most of all with Christ, cared about the potential that God blessed you with and did everything they could to nurture you, to encourage you on. That's the righteousness we celebrate in our lives. That's the righteousness that Christ is the source of. Jesus saw the woman put in her offering. He saw her. Now, last week was our Stewardship Sunday, and this could be and has been used as a, as a powerful story about stewardship. She, she gave her all. But another way to look at this account, and I, I think is very accurate, is I think Jesus actually was lamenting. Was lamenting the fact that, of what kind of system was this, that a widow would give her all in order just to foster comfortable lives for the religious leaders in their long robes who are not caring for others, but we're all about self. Jesus is lamenting the injustice. Jesus laments the injustice we see in our world today when someone is seen as less than because of their gender, their race, their ethnicity, because they are different. Jesus saw her. Jesus sees each and every one of us. A child of God of sacred worth. It was just a couple of weeks ago. Betsy and I traveled to Ohio so that I could visit my mother, and she was celebrating her birthday. And when we got there, a saint in my life, she is, Here she had a gift for me. It's a brick. Now you may think, what kind of a gift is that? A a brick. But what she's done over the years is various buildings. For example, I have a collection of these now. My my elementary school, when it was torn down, she salvaged a brick and made this nice covering on it for the years I attended to the years of the building. Did the same with the firehouse where my grandfather was, was the fire chief. And so... The Salem China Company that I have spoken of where I worked before and during my undergraduate days in Ohio burned down a few years ago, and so she contacted the owners and was able to salvage a brick and made this and closed it for me. Now, you may just see a brick with some nice colors on it. She made it some Oriole colors. She knows my likes. But I see so much more. I went to the site where the building once stood and the fire had destroyed, and it did. There was only but a brick framework left of that. The delivery truck that I used to, to help load and sometimes help deliver was, was still there in the burned-out shipping dock like, like a tomb was there. I could see so much more. In Christ Jesus, we can see so much more. Jesus saw in this woman the value of her life. Jesus saw the prophetic statement that she was making in her offering, in her giving of her all, believing that God would use what she gave the saints. The saints we celebrate truly believed that God was using them to be a witness to us. And we, We as saints, we are the very ones that God is seeking to use this day. The lessons, the values that we have to pass on. The woman, we don't even know her name. Many were bringing offerings, but Jesus highlighted her. Jesus saw, and Jesus sees in each of us Lives that can live out the potential that God has blessed us with. One of the saints I always think of on this day was Lena, that I worked with at the China Company, and I've mentioned her. Lena had a difficult life. She wore a metal back brace because her husband had beaten her, a victim of domestic violence. Her oldest son had gone to serve in Vietnam and came home safely, but was killed a couple weeks later in an automobile wreck. She had known hardship 
in her life. And yet one of the most faithful, loving people I've ever known. I had the opportunity to work as her apprentice and we were in printing and a lot of that's computerized now. I'm sure it's been replaced, but the value she helped instill in me, I draw strength from this day. One day, Lena's daughter was driving her to work. We arrived at the same time. Her daughter drove this old station wagon. I mean it was old. If you're familiar with the Chevy Chase Christmas Vacation movie, it looked like that kind of a station wagon. It even had the spare tire on, on top of the roof there. She pulled up, and then Barry, the salesman, he was driving a brand new company car parked right beside her. And then the fellow driving a delivery truck that I mentioned, he was backing it up, and he was always sort of showing off. So he had pulled up really fast and was backing up really fast. As Lena's daughter was pulling away, he struck her car, the old wagon, and it fishtailed right into that brand new company car. Well, they were all okay. But throughout the rest of the day, the buzz of the office was, did you see what happened to, to Barry's new car? Did you see what happened to that sales car? And then finally, Lena said to me, she said, you know, it was bad what happened. But you know, my daughter's car, not worth much, was the only car they had that they as a family relied upon for transportation. And that simple little moment has stayed with me because in that moment it convicted me. I thought, this isn't right. And it dawned on me I had witnessed the whole thing. So I went to my boss's office, and I was just the errand boy, but I, I went to his office and, and talked to them and said, you know, it wasn't her fault. The driver was going way too fast, and now they have no car. They saw that she had a rental and provided means that they could have a car as a family. It taught me in that moment the importance of being an advocate. The saints in our lives, as I shared in Hebrews, cheer us on, but they were an advocate for those who were hurting, for those who are struggling, for those who are being put down. What opportunity do you have as a saint this day to see the injustice, to speak up for those who cannot speak up, to see and to speak the vision that God has for each of us, to say, I see that potential in your life. The woman, she didn't know. But somehow, deep down, believed that what she gave would be of value. Even if she was giving into a system that had become corrupt to the point that leaders spent it on themselves and devoured their, their own incomes. Yet notice what she modeled. Because it would just be a few days later when Jesus would go to the cross, giving his life for all of us, and for many who wanted nothing to do with him or for his teachings, Christ paid that price to open the door that they would be inspired anew. I was inspired by a principle Dr. Dilhan used once. She is the principal of Rocky Hill elementary school in Hoover, Alabama. She was thinking of the story of the widow and the widow's might, as we know it. And so she thought about the lowly penny and said to her students, what I want you to do, her motto was to inspire and be inspired. I want you to take that penny and I want you to give it to someone. I want you to say to them, you are penny power to me. That is, you inspire me. Now take this penny and give it to someone else and say the same. She said it was transforming upon that school community. The students started bringing pennies to school and they were giving them to teachers and aides and classmates. Saying, you have penny power. You inspire me. You, my friends, we have penny power in Jesus Christ. That is, through this time of remembering those who've inspired us, that we can be inspired through the one who meets us in this holy meal. And through our living, 
like the saints we remember, we can be an inspiration to be an advocate, to be a presence, to be a listening ear, to be an encourager, to one who needs help up. So this week I challenge you with these questions to carry with you as we prepare to come to the table. Where do you see God already at work in our community? How did God use the saints in your life to make a difference? Jesus was speaking out against systems of status quo. The widow had to give everything so they could walk around in robes. Where do we need to speak out? How might your life bring joy to others in our community? Lastly, think about the way the lives of the saints pointed you to Christ. Is the way that you are living pointing others toward Christ? Amen. As we prepare to receive the sacrament, let us offer together this prayer of confession. Let us pray. Lord of all, the nations are yours. The poor are your treasured ones, widows, orphans, the aliens you protect. Your justice reigns over all. Forgive us when our ways devour your beloved. We don't mean to cause harm, yet we do. Forgive us when we consume more than our fair share, all the while knowing that our excesses deny the poor the things they need to live. Forgive us for building bigger closets and not clothing the naked. Forgive us for vacationing in leisure when multitudes long simply for rest. Hear our prayer, Holy One. May your justice and grace reign forever. Amen. Hear these words. We long to mend our ways. Christ can bear these sins for all who eagerly wait for him. His sacrifice on our behalf, his grace toward us, washes us anew. I invite you to turn with me to our words of the great thanksgiving, and this morning we will be singing our responses. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, God of Abraham and Sarah, God of Miriam and Moses, God of Joshua and Deborah, God of Ruth and David, God of the priests and the prophets, God of Mary and Joseph, God of the apostles and the martyrs, God of our mothers and our fathers, God of our children to all generations. So with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, 
gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with all your saints, especially those whom we name before you. And I invite you just to say those names out loud. For Dan. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, strengthen us to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. 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 And now, as children of God, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The body of Christ broken for us, blood of Christ shed for us. The true source of inspiration is ours to receive this day. In the United Methodist Church, we practice what is known as open communion. You do not have to be a member of this church to receive, but rather if it's a closer walk with Christ that you desire, we invite you to partake of the sacrament. And again, we will bring this to you.
Friends in Christ, let us pray. Jesus, you warn us of the dangers of privilege when it is used for personal gain instead of the common good. When in our concern for ourselves and those we call our own, we end up dividing and excluding instead of coming together as your own. You remind us that we cannot buy our way into your kingdom with money or good works. You teach us that like the widow, we can choose to live in God's grace right now, regardless of our personal circumstances, by giving our hearts over to you. Thank you for this message of hope and for calling us to account when our accounting does not point to you. We praise you for the opportunity to be made new in your love. Thank you for leading us to grow in right relationships with God and neighbor. Holy One, thank you for the gift of your faithful who have come before us, for those who walk with us right now, and for all who will come after us, for the extraordinary and the everyday saints who accompany us across time and space on our journeys of faith, and for the opportunity to accompany others with your just and compassionate love. Use us, we pray, as channels of your abundant grace. Giver of peace, hear our prayers for all who are grieving loss of loved ones, loss of freedom, loss of the familiar, loss of health, loss of homes. We pray for families and school communities, teachers and students, as they continue to navigate the new landscape of learning during the pandemic. We pray for cashiers and store clerks, waiters and waitresses, healthcare workers and caregivers, office personnel and those employed in public works as they experience the stresses and strains of challenging work environments. We praise you for your love at work in our lives and in the world, for the gifts and graces of your church, and for the opportunities that you grant us to experience and to bear witness to your holy presence in every circumstance. Thank you, Lord, for inviting us to place you at the center of our lives. In your holy name we pray. Amen. I invite all who are able to please stand as we join in singing our closing hymn.
Bless all whose will or name or love reflects the grace of heaven above, though unacclaimed by earthly powers, your life through theirs has hollowed ours. Please be seated. Reverend Jack Straub, very early in ministry, was leading a congregation that had just concluded their stewardship campaign like we did this past October. The stewardship team was meeting and looking at the pledge cards for the next year when they came across Miss Mamie Carson's. Miss Mamie, very faithful in attending the church and participating, but they knew was, was very poor. She had one dress and it was tattered and torn, and they knew she didn't have much when it came to money. One of the stewards said, we, she's pledging way too much. We, we can't have this. Uh, she should spend it on herself and on her house and fix it up. The church doesn't need her money. She should use it. And they said, Reverend Straupen, you can tell Miss Mamie that when you visit her this week. Again, inexperienced young, he went to visit her called her Miss Carson. Miss Carson, he said, we met and we saw your estimate of giving card and she looked at him and said, are you going to take away my joy? Reverend Straub would go on to become president of McCormick Theological Seminary and he never forgot that lesson this Miss May taught him to not take away the joy. Those we celebrate and those who do not know let us do everything we can to be a witness of Christ's love, that all will know the joy that we celebrate and find strength in. The power of Christ worked to that story that we can hear the story of the widow this many years later. How might God use your story to influence, to be a presence, to be a source of inspiration to those around you? Hear these words ascending forth. The pathway is open before you this day. It's a path of peace and hope, brought to others by God's mighty love and wondrous blessings. Go in peace, bringing hope to all that you meet. Go, blessed ones, to serve God all your days. Go in peace. Amen.